Welcome everyone to another episode of Wolf Street. For those of you that don't know, my name is Wolf. And for those of you that do, thanks for checking me out again. Uh, as always, you can check me out on social media at Every Time I Cash or on my website, everytimeicash.com. Feel free to reach out to me on any social media platform at Every Time I Cash. Um, you could also reach out to me directly, everytimeicash.com slash contact. Today's episode will cover the overall market, basically where we are, where, where we could go up and down. Um, we have four of the FANG names with earnings set up tomorrow, uh, the Fed's mission and mandate, liquidity, uh, gold in the dollar, and then I'm going to be posting some of your uh, chart requests at the end here with some of my thoughts. Uh, I'm going to break this video up into segments. So if you just want a particular part of this video, please feel free to check it out on my YouTube channel. Um, and you'll be able to just draw that information out uh, based on whatever topic you want. So for example, if you just want the charts, that will be a video by itself. If you want the fang name information, that'll be a video by itself. So. Uh, as always, excuse me, as always, you'll be able to also watch this uh, on my YouTube channel at Every Time I Cash. So if you're just listening to the audio version, please feel free to slide on over to the YouTube channel and you can check that out as well. So without further ado, let's get started. Um, on your screen, if you're watching, uh, you will see that I have the S&P 500 chart drawn up for you. Um, I want to start here because we've had this basically a tug of war in the overall market um, since we created a bottom in uh, late March and then creating a, and created a lower bottom uh, or excuse me, a higher low. Sorry, it's a little late here. I'm a little tired, but a higher low um, in late March. So we've been in this uptrend and we've kind of had this tug of war. Um, since early June, where we topped out essentially at 3230. Um, we've basically gone nowhere in the overall S&P for that month. Uh, and this is important because um, essentially bulls and bears, or if you're long or short, or if you're positive or negative, it doesn't matter what uh, word you want to use. But essentially, people, the, the two parties in the marketplace have been fighting about whether or not the market has gone too gone up too far too fast um, if there is a bifurcation in the marketplace that creates a real problem for the underlying uh, market or if we're just kind of stabilizing and consolidating for the next leg higher uh, I think it's important here because a lot of times the market doesn't give you this long to actually sell the top so essentially the longer that we kind of jog in place and kind of run in place here, um, the longer that we set up to potentially find another catalyst or another reason for people to find um, more upward bias. And that essentially comes uh, on the back of a couple of reasons. First and foremost, liquidity. Um, when all of this first happened, essentially the Fed's solution to this problem was to just get ahead of it and pump as much money into the system to kind of offset whatever problems could exist down the road. And then that thesis was back today by the Fed when Jerome Powell essentially said, the Fed's here, we have the markets back, we're not concerned about the upward problem, essentially basically meaning we're not concerned about things getting too hot, we know how to handle that, we're, we're worried about what would happen if things get too bad. Um, so they injected trillions of dollars into the system. They're telling us whether or not we believe it. They're telling us that they're not seeing inflation meet their criteria. They've told us that their, their inflation target is 2% and they've told us that they're there for that 2% and for full employment. So first and foremost, we're a long ways away from full employment and we're going to remain a long ways away from full employment. So that part we can kind of table and put off to the side. Uh, as it pertains to inflation, the dollar the dollar going down the way that it's been going down basically 
creates inflation. Uh, asset prices going up the way that they go up basically creates inflation. But the way that the, the Fed is tracking inflation is independent of those themes. Um, so I'm not going to get into specifics. It's a little bit above my pay grade, but essentially they're not tracking inflation the same way that you would essentially um, consider it. So until their inflation target is met on their standards, given that they're the banker in this game of monopoly, it doesn't matter what we see inflation as. It matters what they see inflation as. So they've told us until they see that 2% hit or until they see full employment, they're going to create a backstop and they're going to do whatever they can within their power to make sure that we don't have um, problems. They've also told us that this... Um, this issue is exacerbated by COVID. So Jerome Powell today comes on television and, and in his Q&A and in his speech, he tells us that uh, COVID is, is the wild card in this process and that uh, as long as it persists, the Fed has to uh, basically be there to support the overall market. So all those things basically tell us that... Um, the Fed's got the markets back, the Fed's got investors backs, the Fed's got the economies back, and the Fed is going to, you know, pepper bomb money into the market and they're going to do whatever they can to firm up asset prices and to make sure that, that the dislocation between the real economy and the financial economy um, gets bridged and that the problems from the real economy basically being people not getting jobs, people not having jobs for years to come, um, corporations laying individuals off and people really struggling. They're going to make sure they're going to try to do whatever they can in their power to make sure that those problems don't necessarily interject in the financial economy. So understanding this, uh, we understand that real liquidity is, um, has never been as high as it is today based on data that's tracked. I don't know what happened um, before the data was tracked, but based on the data that's tracked, it's never been this high. Essentially, real liquidity is just the difference between the available money and how much money is actually needed for economic growth. So they're just pumping as much money into the system and hoping that it ends up in the right place and hoping that that money kind of offsets whatever problems are created by COVID. So as long as that persists, um, you create a base that is essentially long enough um, for uh, sustaining whatever impact that can be caused by COVID. So they're going to pump as much money as they can and they're going to try to take care of it in, in, by any means necessary. Um, the importance here, I'm, again on your screen, there was the S&P 500. The importance here is that We've been carried, if you watch my last video or listen to my podcast, um, you know that we've been carried by a handful or two handfuls of names. Um, essentially, the overall market has just been your Fang, MAGA, Fang Man stocks, and then just a handful of other names. Um, by and large, that has been your NASDAQ 100, which has been in this pretty steadfast bottom left, upper right channel that's identified in blue. Um, when it gets to the top of the channel, it sells back down. Uh, when it when it catches the bottom of the channel, finds support, moves back higher. Um, that channel has also been riding the 20-day, uh, which is highlighted here in green, um, which we haven't really broken for more than a day. Um, we broke it last week. Here, I'm going to pull this arrow up for you. We broke it last week, found support, moved back, and here we are. So we're at this inflection point in the market and in the uh, overall uh, NASDAQ where we have four names reporting tomorrow. Uh, we've held up for the most part. We've retested this prior channel breakout, which I'm going to zoom out and you'll be able to see. We've retested it. Um, we've held that retest and now the S&P has been going sideways for the better part of two months and um, either we have a catalyst where the big names sell off and we can see whether or not there's enough support in the other names to offset whatever selling exists in this one um, or we are in a situation where we see that um, 
the overall market, the smaller names outside of the FANG names uh, can't support and then we sell back. Um, or the third one is that the FANG names actually blow it out and then we have further uh, room for the upside. So if you look at if you look at this channel, either we're going to break out of it and we're going to break back into the previous one, which is identified here in black. Um, in in that case, the first place that I want to look is this pink line, which is a prior high. Then you want to look at the fifty day, and then um, essentially, if we can get there, your hundred day will act as support or this prior high, which sits at. Uh, essentially 97.50 on the NASDAQ 100. So that's kind of how I'm looking at it. Um, on the upside, let me just highlight this as well because I want to give you both. On the upside, if we were to get there, uh, we're just basically looking for this top channel to get tested. I just threw a random um, arrow up there, but essentially that's how it's been going. It's been going to the top, selling back, going to the top, selling back, et cetera, et cetera. So either we break out of it, test this pink, uh, test this 50-day, test this 100 day or um, potentially 200 day, who knows, or we continue to melt up, grind higher, or we explode higher based uh, uh, on the back of really positive earnings. So um, the earnings that uh, come up are going to be Apple, Amazon, Facebook, and Google. Um, I'm going to start with these four names and then I'm going to kind of work my way through um, my thought process and through some other names and some other themes. So first and foremost, let's start with Apple since Apple is the most widely held and favored name. Essentially, Apple has already broken its uptrend um, and it is holding on to this 20-day uh, and 5-day convergence. Uh, either Apple holds kind of break, uh, blows it out of the water, does better than people expected or just good enough. And then that sets up for a potential retest of the highs or Apple has support at its 50 day and then once again at its 100 day. Personally, I'm a fan just like um, for me personally, I'm a fan of the market giving us a reset. That's just me. I prefer to see a reset. Um, it makes things a little bit easier and it gives us a little bit more room to perform to the upside moving forward. And it kind of washes out whoever's weak and whoever's been waiting for that. But it's really important in this market, especially to kind of check your wants at the door and just kind of trade what you see. So for Apple, I'd really love a retest of this breakout back down to 330, give or take. Um, which is, let me just delete this arrow, uh, which is this arrow that I'm moving. Um, I'd really love for that to happen. I don't know if I'll actually get that, but that would be my ideal scenario. A retest of this level and a hold, and then maybe resume higher on the back of um, some positive news or some catalyst or something. But um, given that that may not happen, uh, I have to be very ready and very alert and very aware that um, the upside prior high is just four, it's at 400, which is just um, essentially 20 bucks away. Um, and I want to, I want to isolate that for this particular reason. Uh, Apple has an implied volatility, excuse me, an implied volatility that sits at 37%, which is, um, about a 20% um, increase from its historical 31% uh, implied volatility. Um, essentially, the measured move for Apple is 21 bucks in either direction, um, and that comes out to about 6%. So if you were to just um, put that in numerical terms, Apple's pricing in to either open or it's either on the high side 400 bucks um, or 360 on the low side, which essentially puts us at either the 50 day or the all time high. Um, so Apple's basically sitting right at this midpoint between those two numbers and your earnings, uh, potential is setting up for a move either to retest the highs or to retest this 50 day, which is about as technical as you can get. Um, 
if if it were to break below that on the back of something worse than expected, again, look for this uh, 100 day or prior high to get tested and we'll take it from there. Um, but essentially we have a, a $21 move, give or take pricing on Apple. Um, moving along to Amazon. Amazon, if I'm going to zoom, I'm going to zoom out here for you. Um, Amazon sits in this pretty stellar 10-year uh, uptrend channel. So we haven't tested the top of this channel since uh, 2011. Uh, essentially, since then, we've been just rejecting at this pink line, which could be, an, you could say that's a new channel that's in, right? Um, but we've we've essentially just lived in this for the entire uptrend in Amazon in the last 11 years. Um, and if we zoom in, on Amazon, we zoom in, we're basically setting up for an inflection. Amazon has not given up its 20 day. Let me pull up an arrow for you. Amazon has not given up its 20 day uh, and that has been support. And we're basically, uh, we're basically coming to this inflection point on this triangle and we'll see how it resolves. If we were to break out of this channel to the down downside, Look for your 50-day, and then again, your 100-day, and if we're really lucky, our 200-day to um, act as support on Amazon. And then if if not, we basically could get to this. I'm going to zoom back out so you can see a little more clearly. Basically, we could get to retest this um, resistance line that has been acting as resistance. I don't know what's wrong with my screen. Uh, that's been acting as resistance for the better part of seven years. Um, for Amazon, Amazon's uh, expectations are $1.62 um, EPS consensus. Uh, its revenue consensus sits at $81.27 billion. Um, and then its implied volatility sits at 51% uh, versus a historical implied volatility of 42%, which gives you about a 20% uh, difference going into the ER. Uh, essentially, this just means that options are pricing in a more expensive move, um, and we're pricing in about 8% on Amazon, which comes out to about $235 um, either way, up or down. So essentially, based on that um, word vomit that I just gave you, Amazon's expected to open uh, from $27.80 on the low side to $33.70 on the high side. So... Um, if we zoom back in now, I'm going to go back to the daily. Uh, we see that 2780 basically comes, gives us a test right back to right around our 50 day. Um, so if, if the report that comes out is actually worse than um, expected and it's worse than an 8% move, we could get below that. Um, and then I'd look for the 100 day, which sits at about 2550. Um, but essentially you're looking at an 8% move either direction, which would give you a retest of the 50 day, or it would give you upside to 3370, which is an all time high. Um, you can go 3,400 here, all time high on Amazon. Should it blow out, blow the expectations out of the water? Um, moving right along, we'll go to Facebook. Uh, Facebook's been, if you just look at this, uh, if you look at this chart, uh, Facebook rallied once it and then it's been in this uh, basically megaphone, and it basically is sitting right at the midpoint of this megaphone. Um, now, Facebook has been acting weak as of late and has been rejecting its moving averages. Let me let me just highlight this for you. It's been rejecting its five uh, twenty and fifty day, which are converging here at this. Uh, price point. So the technical setup for Facebook isn't as uh, positive as it is for Amazon per se. Um, but it and it and it essentially just kind of sits right in the middle of this um, broadening pattern. Um, on Facebook, they're expecting a dollar thirty-eight in EPS. They're expecting seventeen point three six billion in revenues, and their implied volatility sits at forty-six percent, 
versus a 41% historical, uh, which is essentially an 11 or 12% uh, bump from the normal expectations. Uh, their options market is pricing a 7% move. And so uh, based on that, uh, Facebook's set to open anywhere from $216 on the low side to $250 on the upside. Um, if we then go back to our chart, that again sets us up for either a retest of the prior high breakout point um, right here. And this prior high goes back to 2018. It comes, it goes back two years uh, to this prior high. So either we are setting up for this prior high retest, which coincides with that 100 day on Facebook, or we set up for a 250 test which essentially puts Facebook at an all-time high. Um, with the bar being kind of low on Facebook and with people kind of already hoping for the best and, and expecting the worst on Facebook, there is a chance that they come out and they just surprise everybody. Um, that's one way I'm looking at it. Um, but then again, there is a potential that Facebook actually uh, does worse than people expected. I get, and in that case, we want to look for this 200-day uh, getting tested. Uh, and in this case, that 200-day would coincide with a retest, essentially, of this prior up channel in Facebook. I'm going to zoom out, uh, which basically has existed, had existed since Facebook was alive um, until it snapped it in March. So essentially, we're either going to sit at uh, a retest of its 100 day, or we go retest the highs. Uh, now I'm gonna go right along to Google. Um, Google has been in this, let me show you, uh, has, has been in an uptrend since it bottomed out at essentially $1,000 back in March. Um, it's the cheapest of the bunch. Uh, it's the cheapest of all of the Fang Man, MAGA, Fang, uh, Fang T, whatever fun little acronym you want to give it. It's the cheapest of the bunch. It's also um, Facebook's largest competitor despite people constantly comparing Facebook to Twitter and Snapchat. Google is their lar largest competitor. Those those are the two companies that eat up the most ad revenue um, on the planet. And those are the two companies that essentially compete with one another for ad dollars. So I own Google. Um, I've, for me, it's one of those stocks that I don't trade. It's one of those stocks that I own. Um, going into tomorrow, they're expected uh, to earn 825 a share uh, or, excuse me, and or 37.31 uh, uh, billion on revenues. Um, Google's IV sits at 37% uh, versus a 32% historical. Uh, this is a 15% markup for uh, Google on that front. Um, and they're pricing in about 93 bucks. Uh, that 93 bucks comes out to about six or 7%. Um, that gives you a range of 1430 on the downside and then 1617 give or take on the upside. So essentially, we're either going to make new highs on Google potentially um, uh, based on the options market or uh, we come back down to basically the 100 day. 100 day sits at 1411, 1430 uh, gives us a retest of this gap down level. Let me highlight it for you, gives you a retest of that uh, that gap fill level, essentially, um, which could essentially coincide with this 100 day when it's all said and done. Um, and in that event, it would potentially break this uptrend that it started. So the important thing here for uh for these names, for Google, for Facebook, for Amazon, for Apple, is that they are the market, right? So we've been we've been riding for the last, like I said, we've been riding. Let me pull it up again. We've been riding for the better part of um, four months now on the back of uh, tech and on the back of the Nasdaq 100 in particular, and essentially the Nasdaq 100. Uh, is 
Um, sorry, I just got a, a text message that was pretty funny, so I apologize. Um, no, essentially, uh, th- these four names are your NASDAQ 100 uh, with with a- um, Microsoft and um, uh, Tesla, I guess you could throw in there, but Tesla's not nearly as big. But these, this is your market. So if if you see these four names disappoint, you're going to see the overall market start to languish and start to uh, lag and, and, and give you a reason to sell it. Um, when you look at the overall VIX, um, this has been essentially another tell for the overall market and how things go, which it's just been a slow and steady depreciation ever since we uh, broke out of this downtrend, which was highlighted by the uh, market lows, uh, which the VIX hit 85, um, and we've just been bleeding out ever since. We did break out in uh, early June of this downtrend on the VIX, and we did uh, uh, retest the 45 level, give or take. But we've been in a, an essentially a downtrend ever since. And if you just overlay that with uh, the NASDAQ or the NASDAQ um, uh, 100, I'm going to pull up the NASDAQ uh, futures. Uh, you essentially see that the VIX melting. Let me see if I can do. A, I'll do a side by side. Be easier. Um, let's see. Okay, so essentially you'll see you see the Nasdaq on your left, um, and I'm gonna put up here. Just put the VIX. You essentially see uh, a as the Nasdaq goes up, and as the market's been going up, the VIX been selling. Um, and, and that's not a coincidence. Uh, essentially, volatility is getting wiped out of the market uh, on the back of uh, an increase in liquidity and an increase in the overall market and essentially an increase of these five, six, seven, eight names in the market. Um, I think it's I, I think it's really important. Uh, I think I, I think it's basically your inflection point and it's basically uh, the scenario where either we got to shit or get off the pot, you know, rubber hits the road, you get the fork at the road, whatever. Um, I want to point out that the NASDAQ itself has um, broken its uptrend um, as highlighted by the NASDAQ futures here. But I mean, essentially, this could just be a, a, a flag, right? So this could be a bull flag, uh, given the fact that it hasn't uh, broken down outside of its 20 day, this could just be a consolidation uh, bull flag that started uh, back in mid July, July fourteenth, when we topped out, um, and then that just sets up for a ramp higher. Um, in that case, you just want to take prior high versus the recent low, and then just add that to the top, and that kind of gives you your next level look for on the Nasdaq. Uh, in this case, we just do it in real time. We got what eleven seventy five, and then you got tenth. Was it ten three thirty? So essentially, you have seven hundred forty five points to the upside. If we were to break out on these highs, um, and then you just add that to eleven seventy five, but you basically eleven eight. Um, so that that is a real potential um, for what we could see. If I mean, there's we could have just like a blowout quarter by all four of these fang names, and then next thing you know, we're off to the races again, right? So that that is something that we could see. If it's a disappointment and if things start to sell off and if this break in trend actually starts to materialize as a downtrend as highlighted by this blue um, arrow, uh, levels to look for are this pivot point that we had in the um, NASDAQ, which is highlighted by yellow. Um, then you have the 50-day. 50 50-day 50 coincides with basically 10,160. And then you have the prior high, which would then coincide with the 100-day. For me, I really would love to see a retest of this prior high and the 100-day hold. That would really wash out a lot of people that are chasing. It would wash out a lot of these um, uh, new pajama traders that have showed up ever since. Uh, we can call them COVID traders uh, that have showed up that have just basically been buying the dip. Um, and it would really kind of just set us up for the home stretch here um, in the... Uh, last hundred days or so before the election, so that's that's how I'd look at it. Um, if I just pull up the Nasdaq 100, once again, um, essentially, you know, we're looking for 
on the upside, we're looking for um, anywhere along the lines of this channel top being tested. I don't know where it would happen, but uh, one of the targets that I would put up if we created a new high, like I said, would be that 11.8 level uh, based on uh, the recent high and then the retest that we just had, just adding that to um, that uh, level. And for those of you that don't really know what I'm talking about there, I'm just going to show you a different way. Essentially, you just want to take uh, this number, which is 11075, call it, and then you want to take uh, the low that it's set in recent memory, which comes here, uh, call it 10. 10,300 or 10, and you just want to take this number, the 1175, you want to subtract this number from it, and then that'll give you a value. And you just want to add that value to that prior high, which was the 1175. Um, so that's just one way to look at it. I, I, you could pull up Fibonacci, see if that, if that uh, falls in line. You could do whatever whatever preference, whatever model you have. But that's just like a, a really simple um, a way to look at it. It's just basically like a, a dumb way to look at it, essentially. Um, so either we're going to do that, or um, if we end up breaking out of that to the downside, you can then um, model it out, that same number, that same value, you can model it out to the downside. Um, so uh, 700, uh, 700 points, give or take, would give you a retest of uh, this 100 day. So essentially, you're gonna test 100 day or you're gonna make a new high, basically 11.8, potentially, um, given how things are setting up. If we were to create a new high, um, that would essentially put the S&P in range to challenge its prior highs. Um, so. 3,400 to the upside, that's uh, where we topped out. And then we can just reassess there, see what happens. Um, that's essentially how I'm looking at it, um, going into uh, these four earnings uh, reports. If they disappoint, is the breadth strong enough to offset whatever weakness is in those four names? Or is it really that those four names are our market. So that is essentially what we're gonna find out tomorrow together. Um, we're gonna find out whether or not um, the market can perform without them or whether or not it even has to, right? So those are, those are the, the things that I'm looking for in uh, the earnings reports from the FANG names. Um, moving along. Gold, right? So gold, silver, commodities. I'm going to pull up uh, gold, silver, and all other precious metals have been on fire. Um, from the last video, if you watched it, paid attention, I outlined that gold was set up to explode higher. It has. Um, it is still something that I look for to set up for an explosion higher. Essentially, uh, gold has moved on the back of a dollar, which has been getting obliterated. Um, and that, we can argue about wh what it was that caused that, but that essentially was caused by the Fed printing a shit ton of money. Um, if we print more money, then the value of the money that's printed becomes less and less, so the value of the dollar goes down. Like, that's just... As, as layman as we can put it, right? So that being said, gold has um, gotten obliterated, or not, not gold, excuse me, the dollar has gotten obliterated and has, has moved down by more than uh, 8%. Now, I'm going to give a shout out to Tony, uh, Tony Dwyer, who um, from Canaccord Genuity, he and his team put together a really solid report about what has happened in the past with uh, gold 
uh, excuse me, with the dollar selling off more than 8%, and they modeled it out to different periods. And I'm going to just spare you the uh, long version, but essentially what, what his report states and what the data suggests is that in situations like that, precious metals will perform. Um, when you have this exacerbated move to the downside of, of greater than 8%, essentially you potentially find a floor before um, ricocheting higher and then retesting and then breaking the lows. So I personally am not looking to um, push the envelope in the gold trade higher and at, in this particular moment and the dollar down in this particular moment, I'm looking for a snapback in, in the opposite directions for both or some consolidation um, before seeing another leg. Um, if I assign a value, I'm looking at the monthly chart on the dollar and you're seeing the 100 month essentially coming up as support um, on the monthly chart. So th there is a potential that we see a bounce in the dollar. And in that case, that could actually create some downside pressure for the overall market, right? So um, these are all historically indicators that kind of work against one another. So when we have the dollar perform, we have the market underperform. When we have the market perform, we have the dollar underperform, excuse me. Um, and in situations where the dollar underperforms um, based on Mr. Dwyer's uh, info and based on the data, uh, we've seen uh, as as the dollar underperforms, we've seen gold perform, we've seen financials perform, and we've seen materials perform by and large and emerging markets perform. So when you start to think of things and when I start to think of things um, in the overall market, so I'm going to pull up the silver chart as well because that one's been on fire. Uh, silver is a a place that I really am interested because um, it, it's nowhere near its, its prior high and it's got a lot of room to the upside. And silver uh, is a beneficiary of a uh, re-expansion of the economy, the global economy, local economy, whatever. But silver kind of correlates with um, a bottoming out process in um, the overall uh, economy. So that is a place that I am looking. Again, these moves have been historical in how fast and how violent they've been to the upside. So I don't necessarily want to chase them. Um, I do want to, you know, outline different levels. Typically, uh, if if we could just consolidate um, above this prior uh, gap out point of twenty one fifty, or above this prior uh, uh, breakout point of twenty dollars, call it. And, and in this case, for silver, I'd really like the $20 level because it coincides with the 20-day. But it, the longer that we can kind of stay sideways and allow our moving averages to kind of catch up, uh, the more constructive it could become and the more of an entry that I can get or that you can get to kind of chase uh, these trades moving forward. But by and large, um, based, on, based on the move in the dollar, it, it's not – when I say that – uh, I'm looking for a potential snapback in the other direction. It's not necessarily me saying I'm looking for a snapback in the other direction and 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 then it, the trade's over or or it's not I'm looking for a snapback in the other direction and then things return back to normal. No, I'm 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 saying that uh, things typically snap back in the other direction um, where the dollar kind of spikes um, and then it revisits and potentially breaks those lows that it's it set. Um, after a move like the one we just saw. So in situations like that where the dollar starts to um, uh, underperform and where precious metals start to perform, uh, there have been um, uh, industrials, there have been financials, emerging markets, and um, uh, materials, miners, and cyclicals essentially that have performed. So not necessarily your tech names that we've been writing out, um, this is more of like what I like to call grandpa stocks. So your grandpa stocks are stocks that like your grandpa would have owned when he was in his prime. Um, and that is kind of where I'm looking. So should, like keeping with the theme, should these tech names not perform or kind of just give you a ho-hum quarter or kind of start to roll over, or kind of start to sell? And should we see a spike in the dollar? And then should we see that spike in the dollar kind of deteriorate 
uh, where I'm looking in, in terms of where we could see potential leadership is in those uh, grandpa stocks. So um, some some of the names would just be like Caterpillar, which is looking really constructive. Um, it's got earnings coming up and it's starting to break out of this 140 level. Uh, Deer, which is again, really constructive, coming, pushing up against prior highs. Um, URI, which had earnings or it's going to have earnings. Uh, no, it had earnings today. Um, and there you go. They had a surprise, $1.82. Um, so these these charts are starting to act really constructively and they're starting to kind of take the baton. Um, another one would be GWW. Again, uh, really, really wide uh, cup and handle base coming back up to a breakdown level at 345, acting really constructively. Outside of that, I want to look at things like Freeport MacMoran. Again, um, coming up on a prior resistance level, and should we break out, uh, I want to see it test this. Oops, I'm going to zoom out. Come on. There we go. Uh, I want to see it test this uh, downtrend that it's been in uh, since... Uh, 2011. So if you if you look at some of these stocks that have not really participated for 11 years, 10 years, whatever, and you mirror them with some of these tech names that have just participated for 11 years, if we do get this inflection point where um, essentially we're in a global recovery and um, your grandpa stocks are going to start to assume some sort of leadership, uh, there is a potential that we start to see... Um, the growth names that we've been in start to relatively underperform um, as some of these names start to perform. So um, keeping with that same theme, uh, JP Morgan. Uh, JP Morgan has been acting pretty constructively uh, since it uh, bottomed out here in early July. Um, they did break out on the back of earnings and they've just kind of been riding along, riding along, riding along. I'm looking for a potential breakout of this 100 day, which I have an alert, as you can see, at 101. I'm going to highlight it for you by an arrow. Um, JP Morgan is one that started to break down, break out of this down uh, downtrend that it's been in uh, as of today. And above 101, we really see a potential for it to retest its 200 day which sits at 112. So you're looking at about 13% upside uh, from here. Uh, Citigroup is another one. Citigroup is one that, again, has been in this uptrend. It hasn't tested that uptrend, but it hasn't broken it either and is starting to break out of this downtrend that it's in and it's starting to test that 100-day above the 100-day. And if it can consolidate there, I really like it to potentially test that 200-day. Um, outside of... Uh, Citigroup, we have Morgan Stanley. Morgan Stanley is uh, my favorite of the bunch because of how constructive it looks and because of this uh, flag that it's in. Now, if I zoom out on Morgan Stanley, you see that it's in this huge uh, triangle. So essentially a breakout of this huge triangle in Morgan Stanley, and I want to see uh, how it performs, and I'm really interested in it potentially uh, going higher. So one level of set is above this 57 level. Look for um, $60 to get tested, and then above there, uh, we can call it 65 and then 67. Um, so that's another another one that I'm uh, keeping my eye on. Excuse me. Boeing is one that has not been acting uh, positively. In fact, Boeing has been complete dog shit as of late. But Boeing tested and held its uptrend today. For me, um, I'm looking for, let me pull this up for you. No, it was the monthly. No, it was, it was the weekly. Let me pull it up. Yeah, there it is. So I'm looking for the 20 month to potentially hold as um, 
uh, support on Boeing, or excuse me, the 20 week to potentially hold as support on Boeing, which kind of coincides with this 160 level, give or take. This is the simple moving average, not the exponential moving average. I typically use exponential, um, but that's one level that I, I'm looking at. If it doesn't hold, then lights out, good night. Uh, I'm, I'm not interested in this. Uh, it's lost uh, everyone enough money um, and it's not looking good. But uh, I'm not in any hurry to rush out and buy this. This is just a name that I'm uh, watching. Should it ever find support, I'm looking for that 20 week. Um, you got uh, other names that I was looking at. Alcoa. Alcoa has been in an uptrend as well, and uh, it's starting to act constructively. You've got the 50-day, 100-day, 20-day, and 5-day starting to act support. You've got this 200-day acting as resistance. If you can get above that 200-day, then it's above all of its major moving averages, and um, it really is – What I don't know what this is, but it's, it's really one of those stocks – that has um, a lot of legs. Where the the level that I'm looking for is this 14, give or take. If we can break above that, the next level I'm looking for is 1550. Then I'm looking for this 1650 level in uh, Alcoa. So, th like, hopefully, this gives you an idea of like some of the the logic that I'm giving and some of the thought process that I'm putting into this and some of the ways that I'm looking at this and how I look at this. Um, I'm not rushing out to buy this stuff right away. I'm not rushing out to see how I'm going to, you know, I'm going to get in right now, but I am starting to evaluate um, where to look should tech start to roll over or if this, these sectors start to outperform tech on a relative basis as well. Um, outside of that, you have XLE. I really suck at trading the XLE. I really suck at trading energy names. You've got this downtrend. Um, if we can break out above that and hold this 50 day, it starts to act constructively and then it could push back all the way to this 200 day, which coincides with 46. Um, essentially your XLE are a Chevron and Exxon. Uh, and as you can see, Exxon starting to act constructively and starting to round, potentially can break out. And then you've got its 50-day, 100-day, and then again, 200-day. Um, outside of that, Chevron, like I said, uh, same thing. If Let me put this in for you. Uh, same thing. If we can uh, break out above this 50, 100-day, uh, 50 and 100 day, then we set up for a potential test of this 95 level and then the 100, which is the 200 day. Um, so these are some of the names that I'm looking at. These are some of the names that I'm thinking about. These are some of the names that I'm uh, considering. TSE was another one, um, which is acting really constructively and has started to round out above the 200 day. And this is a name that could really have some chase um, and could really start to set up to the upside. So that is the logic. Uh, that's how I'm looking at it. That's how I'm considering it. These are some of the things that I'm considering. And outside of that, um, you want to look at, for me, I want to look at distress names that are asymmetric to the market. So a distress name that's asymmetric to the market is like a, basically a name that's so small that's not going to really have an impact on the overall market. Um, but could really be a high flyer and can really uh, rip. So one, uh, some of the names that I, I've been trading this week have been uh, Canopy. We caught the move yesterday. Uh, Tilray, we also caught the move yesterday. And then again, um, uh, what's the other one? Let me pull it up. I forget. Uh, I didn't trade the other one, so just bear with me. Oh yeah, cron. So, sorry, I don't I don't really trade this one, so I'm I'm not very good at it. But essentially, these are some of the names that I'm looking at. Um, again, these are names that uh, set up for asymmetric uh, risk to the upside. They can kind of they're so small that they can kind of move on their own and really start to accelerate, and then not really give a fuck about what the market does in general. An example of this was uh, KNDI today. Uh, this is a, a one that I flagged, but I didn't actually 
uh, trade it successfully, um, which is kind of ridiculous on my part. But um, it's one of those stocks that more than doubled. Uh, I think it, I think when I saw it hit almost fifteen bucks in the after hour, so basically tripled um, from the time that I that I saw it break out, and and it had nothing to do with the overall market because of how small it is. Another one that I'm going to give as, as an example, I'm not saying like trade it. I'm not saying trade candy either. I'm just giving these as examples about um, how you can see upside potential once things break out. So Kodak is one that, you know, shady action going on here, um, shady uh, call buying, sh shady volume, whatever. But you see like when some of these uh, small names that are um, – not big weights in the overall market start to go, they could really start to take out, uh, take off, excuse me. Um, so those are some of the names that I look at on that front. Um, so now, uh, just to kind of wind things down and wrap things up, I'm going to just chart uh, some of the names that people have asked about, and I'm going to just uh, plow through them one after the other. So let's start with Tesla. Tesla has been acting kind of weak lately, uh, which is to be expected given the run that it's been on. Um, and I say weak as in relatively for Tesla, but essentially five day, which was momentum, once it broke out all the way up, uh, is now starting to act as some form of resistance as it starts to create this uh, downtrend. Now, it's really important to know that Tesla is still in this uptrend. I'm going to highlight it with this, excuse me, let's highlight it with a black. Uh, Tesla's still in an uptrend, so it's not like uh, Tesla is not good or it's not like Tesla is a bad uh uh, stock or I'm bashing it in any way, shape, or form. It's just one of the, it's, in, it's in one of those uh, periods for the name where it should consolidate, but essentially it's ping ponging between your uh, 20 day and your 1360 support level, um, and then the uh, five day. So it's overshooting on, above the five day, but it's starting to create lower highs. Now Tesla is one of those names that tomorrow. Elon can come out and say that he has a new gigafactory that's fully financed by someone else um, and then just really take out that high. Um, this blue, it could take out this downtrend first and then take out this uh, all-time high. So I'm not saying in any way, shape, or form that Tesla is screwed. I'm not saying that you know it's going to go down a lot. I'm not saying any of that stuff. I'm just saying that currently it's starting to act weak relative to the way that it was performing. And any close or several day closes below this 20 day really opens the door for this trend to be tested and then for your uh, 50 day to get tested. Let me throw an arrow here. Um, outside of Tesla, we want to look at the uh, socks. The socks has been really constructive, it's really working off. Uh, any sort of negativity and sideways action, and it's still in this uptrend. And on the back of some of these reports, um, it's setting up for further upside. So it broke out of this flag, wedge, whatever, retested, and it's just been going sideways. It's held the 20 day, it's held this uptrend, and then it's um, potentially setting up for further upside. Um, this has come on the back of AMD. So AMD broke out of its uh, February highs, and then it's been off to the races. So AMD is uh, a momentum name currently. I dumped it today, um, but you're looking for the five-day to catch up and essentially the 20-day. Any sell-off that we can get back to the 20-day and if it could hold and potentially hold its prior highs, I'm looking to be a buyer um, uh, assuming that those levels hold. Uh, if things are good for AMD, then potentially they could be good for NVIDIA. AMD actually trades more expensive to NVIDIA uh, currently, which is unlike the way things have been in the past. NVIDIA is in this uptrend. Um, 
you can set the uptrend like this if you prefer. Um, but it's in an uptrend. Uh, it's held. Essentially, this 20-day has been holding a support. Breakdown of the 20-day, again, same theme. Breakdown of the 20-day, I'm looking for 50. Breakdown of 50, I'm looking for 100 um, or prior highs as well. Um, outside of that, we want to go to Qualcomm. The reason I want to bring up Qualcomm is because they had an earnings report today and they really blew it out of the water. Um, Qualcomm is important because they just broke out of a 20-year base. So this is a name that I really want to keep my eyes on. They've got uh, China implications, um, but there is a potential that things get better on that front, and there is potential that this name still has legs. But essentially, your $100 mark or your prior high is where you want to look for uh, support. And then I want to see how uh, investors treat this and traders treat this. Is this going to be a sell the news event where they bring it back down to the 100 level, or is it going to be an instance where they um, keep pushing it? LRCX is another one. Uh, just broke out again in the after hours, created new highs, solid uptrend, still up, up and up, up and away. Um, this is one that I own personally. I don't, I don't really trade it. I just own it. Uh, I've owned it now for about 130 bucks. Um, as long as this uptrend holds and this prior high holds, uh, it's not one that I'm looking for um, any uh, downside in. So outside of that, I want to look for Avago. Vago has held its 50-day. If for whatever reason it breaks, I'm looking for the 100 and 200-day to act as support. The 100-day uh, and 200-day would coincide with this uh, gap fill. Let me highlight it for you here. Um, so this is one that I'm keeping on my radar. A break of this downtrend should springboard it back to this 326 and then prior high level, and then a break out there, and um, the semis are really on fire um, in general. Um, let's move on to Texan. Uh, again, 20 days not letting up. It did break out and fail, but it's it's come back into this 20 day. If it can take out this high, it really sets up for more upside. If it fails this 20 day, fails this uptrend, I want to see this uptrend hold, uh, which coincides with the 50 day. You can't see it, but I promise you it's there. Um, and then from there, I'm looking at the 100, 200 day again um, on that. Um, by the time I got to the 100 day, it would be right back to this gap fill level as well. So I'm looking, that's how I'm looking at that one. Um, AMAT is another one that uh, is flagging. And should it break out of these recent highs, I'm looking for, you know, 67 to get tested. Um, let's keep it going with uh, Skyworks. Uh, again, broke out of this flag. It's just consolidating. A uh, breaks 140. I'm looking for more upside. You you can just see that these are all really constructive names in general, and you can see that there's it's it's I'm not I'm just cookie cutter. Uh, I'm just treating this like a cookie cutter, essentially. Break the 20, look for 50. Break the 50, look for 100. Break the 100, look for 200. And then if there's gap fills along the way, that's kind of where I'm targeting it. And from my perspective and my vantage point, I'm thinking of it in terms of uh, buy levels. And if there are weak ones, let's just pull up Intel, for example. Uh, the weak ones will continue to reject their five-day and essentially... Uh, Further uh, capitulation to the downside sets up for further selling. Now, Intel is interesting because Intel is coming up on a long-term trend, um, which I want. I want this thing needs to speed up. So it's coming up on this long-term trend, and I really want to see how it behaves there. That coincides with its 200 weeks. So I wouldn't be surprised to see Intel potentially flush out and then start to bounce uh, before, you know, p potentially reaching further selling pressure, probably around the mid-50s, if it could even get there. But if it can get back to this uh, 55, 54 level, look for it to sell again. But I'm really looking to see how it behaves around this uh, uptrend, which kind of coincides with that 200-week. 
Now, if we just move on to regular um, tech, Square is one that's on my radar because of um, the progress that you saw in PayPal, which uh, PayPal announced earnings tonight. They blew it out of the water because everyone's stuck at home and everyone's buying shit online and everyone's using online payments. So PayPal is one that could spark a catalyst in Square, which I haven't checked. I can check right now, actually. Yeah, PayPal currently in the after hour, not currently, but in the after hours was trading at 131. So above this uh, 132 level, I'm looking for 135. And then if it can break out, uh, it's going to be tough to push this one down. Um, same theme, same same kinds of names. I'm looking at Shopify. Uh, Shopify broke out. It sold back off to its uh, prior highs. Um, and then if it could hold here and allow these moving averages to catch up, I'm looking to be a buyer at this level. If not, I'm looking for a gap fill. And then if it holds there, um, look for some sideways action and take it from there. Um, I'm just going to plow through, like I said, uh, TTD. Uh, TTD is one that has been uh, not as constructive as it was. It broke this little uptrend that it had and is currently um, rejecting the um, 20 and 5 days. If it, for whatever reason, fails, I'm looking for the 50 to get tested. If not, and it breaks out, then you just start pulling up prior highs, 460, and then 470 for, for that one. Uh, this is, again, this is not one that I trade. This is just one that was requested, so I just wanted to chart it. Uh, Zscaler. Fake out today, could be exhaustion, could just be going sideways. We'll see how it plays out. This is your uptrend. Your uptrend is in line with that 20-day. Uh, if it breaks, look for this prior high. If that breaks, look for the 50-day. Fastly is starting to act constructively. It's starting to uh, trade back above its 5 and 20-day. Held this seventy-five dollar pivot uh, level. If it can get above eighty-seven, I'm looking for um, essentially ninety, then ninety-five, uh, which would coincide with you know filling the, that sell-off that it had back in what was that date? Uh, back on the thirteenth. Um, so that's that one. Uh, Teladoc had earnings. I think they had earnings. Yeah, Teladoc had earnings. Let's see where it traded so I can give you accurate uh, info. But Teladoc uh, had the report. It traded up to 235 and then it failed. Um, essentially, the 20 and 5 day need to hold. If they don't hold, I'm looking for this prior high, and then again, look for that 50-day. Teldoc's in this uh, broad megaphone, so there is a potential that we see this uptrend get challenged. Uh, if it holds, and they, this looks like it's going to be a downtrend. So if it holds and it and it is in this downtrend and, and it breaks out of it, then would be a time to potentially give up on the selling and look for more upside. But until then... Uh, I just want to see how it plays out. Now, for me, on the back of earnings, I usually give things three days unless there's like some crazy catalyst that uh, was not expected and that people uh, w wouldn't have expected. Uh, in, the, in that case, I'm looking for um, upside or downside uh, in terms of a chase. But by and large, I wait three days. I give it a three-day rule. I give it a gap, uh, three-day loo. A rule and then I see where it goes. Uh, Netflix, uh, unlike its uh, counterparts in the Fang names, has been uh, struggling here with its uh, five and twenty day. It it's not been able to close above it for two days now. It was uh, struggling with it um, after it failed its prior channel top, and then 
for me, I, I really want to see this get flushed out back down to 50 and potentially the 100 just so we can kind of create a reset. The, the, the 50 day was Netflix's low on the back of earnings in the after hours. So I really want to see that low get tested again and see where, where it goes from there. Uh, Lulu has just been going sideways. The 20 days is my tell on this one. If it gives it up again, 50 day, then I'm looking for this um, 293, 292 level um, before I look at the prior high and 100 day as support. Um, let's keep it going with workhorse. Uh, this one's getting really tight and the 20 days acting as support. If it can just get above this 1750 level, um, we could potentially see momentum to 19, uh, and then 20, um, potentially it's recent highs from there, but essentially it's just really constructive sideways action. This one's a name that this is like the kind of name that I look for because this one has, uh, I think 30% short interest. So uh, this is something that I look for um, when I identify some of these small names that are uh, pro that provide asymmetric risk uh, to the upside. So from, from there, we're going to go to Penn. Penn is not a name that I trade personally, but this is a name that was uh, asked for. Giant cup and handle, if you look at it, uh, if it could break out above this $40 level, uh, it could really get some momentum behind it currently acting really constructively with its 50 day holding a support and then it's 20 and and five day acting as support as well if for whatever reason it sells back off you have the 100 day uh, as support at the bottom end of its range of this range which is about 27 bucks and then below that uh, your 200 day is the line in the sand essentially for me um, win is another one uh, this 69 level holds as the line in the sand. It's starting to act constructively, starting to make um, higher lows on a relative basis. So there's a potential that this one, now that um, it's got uh, earnings, now that that's going to get out of the way, there's a potential that this one could start to see a relief rally or if it just starts to turn over on the back of COVID, you've got 69 bucks as your line in the sand. And that's how I would treat that one. Um, space is one that also falls in line with that um, uh, asymmetric risk. Uh, I'm looking for this 20 day to act as support, uh, which kind of coincides with this uh, prior high that it set on May 11th. Um, prior high being like a, a recent high that it set on May 11th, not all time, obviously, because that was up here. Um, but if that could hold, then I'm looking for uh, basically 21 level to hold. If that doesn't hold, I'm looking for 18 to get retested. And in which case I'm going to look to start buying again. I've unloaded most of the position that I had. I, I love to trade around this name. It's not one that I want to own for the long haul on a big basis. Uh, Spotify is one that broke this recent uptrend that it was in on the back of earnings, rallied right back to the five day and it failed. This is an example of a name and this is an example of a setup that I look for uh, for thinking of what kind of tech am I going to short. So if we, we start to roll over for whatever reason in tech, I'm going to look to see this level act as resistance and then I'm going to look personally to short into that resistance. And then from there, um, if you could break down below today's low, I'm looking for uh, 240 to potentially get tested. And then your 50 day, which could be 235, uh, which coincides with like a little gap fill here. Uh, so that's kind of how I'm looking at it. This is, so these are the kinds of setups after a crazy run, you know, I'm just looking for potential failure and then potential retest of this uptrend. And even if it did that, it doesn't mean that it's a bearish thing. It just means on a short term basis, it could be uh, setting up for a potential bearish um, situation just to retest. Um, D Dog, 50 day acting support, as long as that holds. And if it could, if it could take out the, the recent highs, it becomes up, up, and away. Now, if I pull this, 
and show you that we are essentially in a flag uh, or we broke this uptrend and now that we've broken this uptrend um, we are in resistance so we'll see how it plays out but that's essentially your line in the sand this downtrend is your line in the sand um, above this uh, 93 level sets up for potential retest of the highs as long as the 50-day holds should be constructive if not then it's got a lot of downside to that 100 day that's one way I look at that one crowd strike um, setting up on the back of fire eye setting up to retest it's prior highs at 118 it, again now I, I showed you uh, D dog and uh, where it held its 50 day and then it, re it potentially sets up for a slingshot here's here's one as an example so crowd strike uh, held its 50 day had a catalyst on the back of fire eye sets up for a rip back to the all-time highs uh, draft Kings is another one that was uh, requested uh, draft Kings is just consolidating here at this um, 55 and 20 day moving averages it's having trouble getting back above it if you get a catalyst where it's uh, negative this this convergence of moving averages is going to act as resistance and then you and we should see a retest of this 100 day if for whatever reason that breaks you've got a long way down on um, draft kings in that case and for me it's really important to identify that because the next one Nicola uh, gives you an idea of how that could potentially play out like I said when momentum so like I said you want to identify the major moving averages and when momentum starts to wane uh, I drew this out for someone else excuse me um, when momentum starts to wane uh, and these high flying names after huge runs up, run ups start to uh, fail their five and 20 day they could really start to exacerbate to the downside um, if their major moving averages start to break and and you see how fast it happened now in this case it was a secondary so yeah I, I understand but uh, you see what happened when it broke its 20 day here it just they just basically pushed down to that next level and in this case that 50 day basically coincided give or take with that uh, gap support uh, right around 40 bucks so in this in the case of uh, DraftKings, same thing. If, if when they start when they start to struggle at momentum at momentum uh, moving averages, I really want to identify the next levels. And if they start to sell, I really want to push into that. Um, and if they start to break those major moving averages, I really want out because those sells start to get aggressive as um, the, the theory essentially isn't proven, um, and and these names start to get expensive um peloton uh held its oh, excuse me let me do that again held its 20 day uh held this um 58 level uh pushing back up against uh 67 and showing signs of life to potentially test its prior highs if it breaks this 50 eight level give or take i'm looking for the 50 day i'm looking for a prior high i'm looking for 100 day same concept across the board. Um, and then let's just see a couple of other ones. Let's see, Disney's a good one to pull up. So Disney is really struggling um, with this moving average cluster. If it can, if it breaks below this 115 level, I, I don't have support for you on a daily basis. In that case, I'm going to have to start pulling up uh, weekly moving averages. You see when I pull up weekly that it's basically hugging that 200 week. And if it fails that 200 week, let's pull up monthly. Um, it fails, which also, again, it coincides with the 50 month. So if it, if it fails that 200 week, 50 month, you're looking at 108 quick and then you're just, you got air pockets. So this is one that I, I really want to highlight and keep my eyes on. 
if for whatever reason things get bad and things get uh, um, COVID, the COVID thing starts to get a little bit worse and, and this one can't recover and maybe the NBA bubble starts to suck because of uh, an outbreak or something. I don't know. Uh, this is one that really has limited support below that, call it 113 level, um, if I just want to be extreme. I'm going to pull up just a couple more names and then I'm going to stop because this is getting really long. Uh, but Chegg is a good one because it's still in its uptrend and it's still um, holding its 20 and 5 day. Um, again, if you fail that 20 and that 5 day, you want to look for 50 and then you want to look, which uh, does, ironically or not ironically enough, falls in line with a prior high. And then you want to look for 100 day, uh, which also falls in line with a prior high. Um, so uh, if this holds, I'm looking for new highs potentially to get tested. This is one that could really get, start to see some uh, momentum as back to school starts to be a um, real thing. So let's just go down and see if there's anything else. Um, I think that's pretty much all of it that was requested. I'm just going to throw a couple on here that for my sake, Walmart, either this is a cup and handle or this is a double top. Um, we're going to find out, we'll find out soon enough, essentially a breakout above 134, uh, and my, I have an alert for 134.15, but essentially breakout above 134, uh, and Walmart starts going again. Uh, Target is another one that has been acting constructively. It's holding this five day, a breakout above, uh, 125 and it sets itself up to potentially test its recent highs at 130. Um, another one was, um, Costco. Costco is flagging, wedging, whatever. Um, but a breakout above this three, a uh, 330 level could potentially get it going to, and in this case, a 331 is its prior high essentially. So breakout above the prior highs, it gets going. Uh, MasterCard has earnings in the morning. Uh, it'll be interesting to see what they say, given that Visa was uh, a little weak um, in terms of price action. It sold off and rallied back, but it it was nothing to write home about. But essentially, uh, 313, uh, 314, my line in the sand, and I want to see how it performs there. Again, maybe a cup and handle or maybe just a really hard resistance level. Above 315, I'm looking at uh, 320. Um, and then push up to 325, which is that uh, gap uh, level that I want to identify. Um, outside of that, uh, Eli Lilly is in a, is starting to struggle. It did make a new high, but it's in this little downtrend. If it breaks out above this downtrend, could potentially retest this high. Um, the 50-day really needs to hold below that 100 and then prior high. Um, and then J and J starting to act pretty weak against this, uh, five day and now 20 day. There's a potential that retests this 200 day, in which case if it holds, I want to see if I want to be a buyer, um, i look to potentially be a buyer. We'll see if it holds. Um, and then let's see a couple more that were requested. Oh yeah. China names, Baba, um, broke this uptrend that it was in and now it's just failing there. So one of these days we could see a headline that uh, snaps Baba back down to the 20 day, or if it could uh, break out above this downtrend, um, looking for uh, 260 and then prior highs. Um, and then the last, let's see if there's a, any, the last one was, oh yeah, Beyond. Beyond was the last one. Uh, Beyond's really, pressing up against um, this downtrend here. So if it can get above this, um, there's a potential that it could really start to spark um, and then it could potentially run up to 144, give or take, which is 50 day. Um, so I really wanna see how, how it behaves. A break below this 100 day, we kind of have an air pocket down to 200. Um, so I really wanna see how it performs, especially given the fact that volume is getting weak and um, it's really either in a flag or it's in this channel. So we'll see how, how it plays out. And I lied, the last one I'm gonna leave is Roku. 
Uh, Roku's in this um, downtrend after it recently popped up to 167. Um, these pink lines identify the levels that I'm looking at. I really want to see this 20-day hold. If it holds and it breaks out above these levels, you know, it could potentially get back to 167. It breaks out above that, and we're looking at prior highs. So essentially, I'm going to leave it there. Um, this was really long. Again, if you just want to watch individual compartment uh, compartments of this video, uh, they will be up. Uh, feel free to do so. And as always, I want to say thanks for your time. Thanks for checking me out. If you have any questions, please reach out to me at Every Time I Cash. Please leave a comment in the comment section below if you want things covered for the next video. I read all the comments. Um, and if you have any questions, comments, concerns, another way to reach out to me is everytimeicash.com slash contact. Um, and as always, we'll see how things go tomorrow with uh, the, the FANG names and with the MAGA names. But as always, uh, stay safe, stay profitable, and stay locked in.